So I describe people um, from a sales perspective, according to uh, Neil Rackman, he, he put out this book, uh, Major Account Sales, I think it's called. Yeah, you got it right there. Major Account Sales Strategy. And he describes three different groups of people. Focuses of uh, power. These are the money people. Focuses of dissatisfaction. Think about the program office, right? And then the focus is a receptivity. These are the people willing to help you navigate their agency, but they really don't have any influence over the requirement or the acquisition strategy. So you always want to be tracking on that. But when you write an RFI, it's a way to go right into an agency and right in front of these people um, without a lot of extra work. So remember, if you wanted to get into an agency and I said, hey, go find focuses of receptivity, focuses of dissatisfaction, focuses of power. I mean, I stood up an entire business line to help our customers do exactly that, getting in the door. But if you could write an RFI that gets you in the door, then you've bypassed a lot of this really hard work here. So if you write an RFI response to the Navy for a particular piece of work, let's say for PEO uh, Digital, I'm just using that as an example, you're going to get in front of contracting officers, right? They're the ones, this contract officer, contract specialist, these people in the acquisition shop, they're the ones who are going to get it and, and read it and, and record it. Hey, we did market research. We got it, right? Excuse me. Um, the other thing about the focuses of power is they'll put it into the repository. We received this, we're putting it somewhere, our hard drive, the network drive, whatever, whatever tool they use, they've got it there. When the government is looking for people to reach out to industry to do future market research, they often will look at incumbents and then people who have responded to sources sought in RFIs before. Um, so th that's an extra value you get. But these people look at it. And it matters because if everything you say in there makes sense, you can begin to influence the opportunity. If everything you say in there demonstrates a compelling case that your company fits this requirement, all of a sudden the acquisition shop, the contracting officer is thinking, uh, I wonder if this would be a good chance for us to award to this contract or to set it aside to a woman on small business, whatever it is. So then the second one is focuses on dissatisfaction. These are the people in the program office with the need, right? They have the challenges they might be facing um, or they have the future goals. They're thinking about emerging technology or they're thinking about what they're trying to do to compete against China, whatever it is, right? They have the need. These are the ones you would work with on a day-to-day -day basis. When you write an, an RFI response in particular and you're responding to the scope of the work that they have and you're providing feedback, this response goes right back to the people who are gonna be the technical reviewers, right? And again, I'm not speaking from a factual standpoint, I'm speaking from a sales perspective. Who's gonna look at this, but the very people who are probably gonna look at your proposal if you sent it. So you instantly are helping them see you and then see your way of thinking on things. And if they really like it, like I wrote a response once and the CIO was one of the people who was reviewing it, they just bypassed everything. And they said, let's bring these guys in and talk. And when they talked to us, I brought in two of my subject matter experts and I was a subject matter expert. We just wowed them. They said, how can we go right with this company, right? They're looking to work with us. We've got to give them the reasons. And so when we write good responses and a, a program office can see that when they do this, these tactical reviewers can influence the acquisition approach to a degree by saying, we really love this. This, this company understands our, uh, our mission, our requirements, and they have solutions that we can see would help us. And the last group is the focus of receptivity, right? And these are people like small business specialists or in the SBA, there's procurement center representatives and your district office. If you're an 8A, your business opportunity specialist. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if I was an 8A firm and I was responding to an RFI or sources sought, that was an email response, I would copy my business opportunity specialist. Just every single time I just copy them. And in fact, I'd make sure that name says, you know, John Smith, comma, SBA, BOS. Right. So business opportunity specialists. These are people you want to be aware of that you're writing responses to RFIs so that they're there to advocate for you. A uh, quick lesson. I learned this lesson from a contracting officer. Actually, when I had my last company, she was telling me, um, you know, we were doing these monthly reviews and something heated was coming up, but it had been brewing for several months. And, and she was like, look, you've got to copy me on every email you do within, within the program office. So if you send it to the core and to the program manager, copy me and copy me from the beginning. That way they don't feel like um, we're going out and telling mom or dad about, about them, right? Right from the beginning, we're just keeping everybody informed. That way, when it's time for the contracting officer to get engaged, they can help. And in this case, when I talk about focuses of receptivity, 
if the PCR or the small business specialist is seeing that you're writing responses and maybe they look at that and they understand that it looks like it's a pretty good response, then they'll be able to open their mouth when the acquisition shop is going maybe on a different direction, right? They'll be able to help you, but how can they help you if you don't keep them informed? And so when you respond, that's something to keep in mind. 